I'm Marty Williams. <laughs> I'm Robin Caller. We're just talking today about the DVD, why we did it. And first of all, I got to ask, uh, what was it like for you working with uh, moi, being so wild and not prepared and, you know, and... Fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and we begin right like, off with a fuck. It was like uh, sitting on a razor blade, mm -hmm. all right? Um, you Could know, if I moved the wrong way, I was, I knew I was in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, I had to, like, for that night, I had to be inside your body and your head all right. It was. It was. It was only for that one hour and forty-five minutes. But I, I was concentrating so hard that at the end of the at the show, I just collapsed on the console. <laughs> all right. I had candles all around me. I was saying prayers. Channeling. Good night, I, met, good night. Uh, I knew I was in trouble when I walked in the dressing room before the show, just to say, like, good luck. Mm -hmm. You're sitting there writing shit down, writing right shit down. I'm saying, he doesn't know it by now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying, this is all new stuff. Oh, yeah. It was all basically, right. yeah, it came out of the bat with about 15 minutes of new stuff. And I know we'd done kind of the foreplay. You'd seen the shows in different towns, and you knew yeah. there was pretty much a rhythm to it. But then all of a sudden, first five to ten is, oh, oh, where all, do we go with this? All, go, all new. And so it was like, you know, I had a, it, was like, it was like dancing together. I had to kind of, yeah. like, dance with you. Um, had we edited it, it would have been really pretty easy. But I, of all the people to shoot live, yeah. I can't think of a more difficult challenge <laughs> yeah. in the it's world. It's me and the crocodile hunter. And, uh, yeah. yeah, go to the one with the cobra. <laughs> Cut to cobra, back to crocodile, finger in cloaca, and scene. It was a bit like that. You know, when they said that you'd be doing it live, and everyone said, yeah, right, live, meaning that, you know, it's, you get a delay and you'll, it's shot live at the moment, but you edit it. But no, you're... It was going out then. And yeah. I didn't know this, but you said the first cue was off. So it was like... Yeah, well, they, it started on the blue to opening cue. Uh, <laughs> uh, here we were, you know, we had seen it in, let's see, Los Angeles and Phoenix and Portland and San Francisco and Baltimore and Memphis and Nashville and Louisville and New York. I had seen every show off, and the yeah. cue was... Every night it was the same way. Dave, Dave Matthews, Matthews music, music. Uh, the big music change, ladies and gentlemen, Robin Williams. Boom. All of a sudden, Dave Matthews starts, and I hear, ladies and gentlemen, Robin Williams. <laughs> it was like going on four, and one, and bang! Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Off the bat. It was a lot of fun for me. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Robin Williams. So okay. you're basically putting it in on the fly, too. At that on point. the fly. All right. Wow. And, and I'm saying, and I'm, start, I'm rocking. And I'm going, oh my God, this is not happening to me. <laughs> this is live, the, the responsibility of, of filming what I had, I had never seen a show this brilliant. Now, you know, and I did the first show with you for oh, HBO 20 some odd years ago. That was a weird night. We had two shows that night. The first one was death because they, everybody in the audience was lit and they had all these kind of industry people in the audience and they were like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. mm, kind of funny. And then the next show we said, okay, screw it. Like, we don't need audience reactions. Let's just keep the lights off, right. dark. And it kicked. Well, you it's know, like, it's funny. I learned, <clears throat> excuse me, I learned something from that show. And ever since then, I'm the one director who won't like the audience. Amen. Um, yeah, because it's that whole thing where they, a lot of times they think you have to see people laughing in order for you to yeah, laugh. Yeah, what if you look out and see somebody not laughing? That would be the great thing, live at Budokan. <laughs> <laughs> You're not funny. And what we did is, you know, if you look at the show, you'll see there's architecture lit. So when you can go out for a, a relief shot, when mm -hmm. people are applauding for the maybe like the millisecond when you're slow down, yeah. um, you know, you had to see something. But we kept it. And another thing we did was, because you talked about industry types, was that the first two rows, when I first got to New York, mm -hmm. and this was in the Broadway theater, by the way, in which nothing had ever been filmed there right. before. And now, of course, the unions. Know. Yeah, we're a bit. They were a bit. There'll be no problems today. <laughs> Step away from the DAT recorder. <laughs> There'll be five guys to carry in the laptop, two to access the information. Sorry you had a problem with your hard drive. <laughs> Who knew about the virus literally smacking the lid, breaking it, and somehow the machine went down. <laughs> and you can't do nothing about it. <laughs> yeah, not today, not tomorrow. You have a problem with that? Not at all, Tim. No, sir. No, no sir. sir. No, thank you. <laughs> load in, load out. We're happy. Load in, load out. If you got a problem, it's another 25000 Bingo! <laughs> Bobby! No problems. Just write more checks, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, what I did was I got there and I said, okay, I want these first two rows for a camera dolly. But what I really didn't want them to do was sell the front two rows. Right. 
So what we did was, is before the show, is my guys went up, and you did this on the road a little bit too, yeah, we but they went up to the really cheap seats in the top. There were no cheap seats, but the... Yeah, you find people way in the back. Way in the back who were like really fans, there aren't fat guys with pinky rings on who are trying to <laughs> impress their 22-year-old girlfriend. And we just put those people down there it and it, the gives, it gives you the people who really want to be, they all wanted to be there, but you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, but you get regular people who are having a great time and you can talk to and not be like, get away from me. Oh yes, my little salmon-headed friend. A lot of times, if, if they're famous people right up front, people will be watching them more than they watch the show. That's, a, that's the they main thing. want to see if Jack's having a good time. Yeah, so that's why I was wondering how you guys did those like comic reliefs in the Academy Awards. The only time it's a great kind of award show is the Golden Globes because it's basically an open bar. Yeah, everybody's loaded. Oh, hammered. You know, that's why you can get, you know, Depardieu basically going, Jeffrey Katzenberg, I'll give you a big wet kiss. <laughs> give you the tongue. Ah, you love you. Ah, you buddy. Come on, everyone. A lot of those shows, like what we did that night, was live, you know. They had no choice. It's, you know, they're putting it out, except they had the censorship. With us, we had no censorship. Well, that was the beauty of it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. that with us, it was like, right. okay. Whatever goes, yeah. goes. Oh, you're going after Michael Jackson? Good luck. Standards and practice. Britney Spears. Britney Spears. Oh, uh -huh. poor little child. <laughs> and the virgin. In many ways. And yeah, and they say this stuff, legal, legal's probably going, ah! Did he just say you have to be this high to write Michael? Yes. Too late now! Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. That, that was the trade off. Was the trade off the, is uh, yeah. what is, is. And I've never gotten the type of feedback. I mean, maybe you too, the people just coming up and saying, man, that was wild. I'll tell you, I've been doing this for 25 years, and I, I've done a lot of very, directed a lot of very famous shows. I have never in my life had response like this. Me too. And uh, I mean, of course, it was brilliant, but I think the live and the dangerousness of it, you yeah. know, and it's funny when they, when they said to me when it was over, they said, do you want to change any of the shots? And I looked at it, and my anal part of me said, yeah, there's like five or six little things I'd like to change. Yeah, but then I said, why would I want to change the organicness? This works. Yeah. It's not broke. Don't fix it. And, you know, and I left it. And I'm happy I did. Yeah, but with that set, man, that, that set that looked like, you know. Pickup sticks. Yeah, it was pickup sticks or what it actually looks like on a, you know, when the hair transplant program. <laughs> when you're actually looking up here, it's actually their point of view. But it's it's such a bizarre thing with that big eyeball, too. I know. People kept wondering, what's that for? I guess it's from the dollar bill. I don't know. It's uh, it meant nothing. <laughs> yeah. For those looking for hidden meaning, it means nothing. It's not like some it, uh, e pluribus. No, it's not Ashcroft's eye. No, it's just basically an eye. There it's just an eye. The set just became... It is there to be conscious of all the, the filming. Marty with his candles. Robin living in the moment, hopefully. And the moment of the eye seeing all I and I not looking at I and I with I re one nation. It's all there for the eye, as the eyes have it, as it were. <laughs> and that's what the, I mean, the, the set design, having been on the road, it was just plants, but all of a sudden, then, like you said, you have pickup sticks and these kind of a weird... playground. The first time I walked out, I felt like a crab louse going from one to one. <laughs> I felt like that if you just hung on the hair, it looked like how crab lice go from hair to hair. I did that one night and people kind of went, Obscure reference for those who've had crabs. <laughs> the rest are going, oh, is he talking about, oh, crab lice? Even there's some people that haven't? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Two Mormons are going, dear, is he talking about what? What is that? No, you know what we all did. You know, the uh, solution right there, the older thing is to set your pubic hair on fire, get an ice pick, and stab them when they come out. That's, that's not the good way. Or well, what you have to do, if you do the Montauk cure for crabs, is what you do is you smother your pubic hair in butter, wait till they get fat and they fall off, and you've got yourself a little crab dinner right there. They're small, but they're good eating. A little crunchy, they're soft shell, and they're full of the, you know, basically a lot of you. They sell them down on the wharf, right? Oh, crabs, yeah. <laughs> Big bucket of crabs. <laughs> Dad, these are so small. Mm-hmm. And good eating too, kid. The, uh, it did look like, if you, it, it, when you think about it, if you look at hair under a microscope. It was. Bingo. That's, what that's it why I thought it was like, ladies and gentlemen, it's like one of those shots of you are here. That's you what it the, was, by the way. It's basically my forearm. Oh, it's yeah. Here, that's is, what we planned. Yeah. This is the international <laughs> symbol now for how are you. <laughs> yes, I get that quite a bit. Somewhere. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Thank you. Oh, it's a Zorro greeting. Marty, I saw the Robin Williams show. <laughs> a lot of guys. <laughs> international symbol for honey, would you like a little... <laughs> or the, uh, or, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Our lines are open. Even on the DVD, we're hurting people. We're calling now. Line falling at the bottom. 1-800-PUSS. Sorry. Even the women in the room are going, really? Ouch. But that's what we did. That's that night. It did you have at any point when you, well, we knew we got into the rhythm because after the first 10 minutes, it was like pretty wild, and then it went, <laughs> we're back into the show. But it was like, were you thinking, uh oh, was it? I was always, always concerned that it could go anywhere at any time, <laughs> and often did. <laughs> did even anytime. though we, yeah. Yeah, we had one, one, you know, verbal fluff, but I went like, that's right. I did, I did inhale, good night, everybody. Yeah, there's a lot of little things that turned out to be gems, like yeah, drop right. the water. Yeah, okay. and then uh, don't touch that, Mr. Williams. <laughs> Union guys going, don't touch it, Mr. Williams. <laughs> I mean, the, I thought that the other thing was that, you know, forcing the improv off the little flubs became really gems. Yeah, was, I think uh, that's what makes it like live, because you know, normally you go, let's edit that out. There must have been like about 30 people in the truck behind me, which I wasn't aware of any of them, because I was just like, you know. <laughs> Like a middle linebacker, I was a, like Mike Singletary. Yeah, you know? you're like, Read the play, audible on five, he's going for the dick joke. Full, four, puss, one, read out. Here we go. You're right, I must have been like, the and game's I, over. I was like, you know, like this, and then it was over, and I just went, <laughs> and we were applauding, <laughs> and I was just like. <laughs> yeah, like I walked off stage, the same thing before I went out, I felt this. They had you had a camera backstage, and I was going, "Fuck you, Marty! I'm yep. not going on. We Fuck have you! In the you have that on the DVD. Yes, we do. Good. Thank yeah. God that wasn't in the audience. Going, Fuck this! I gotta go. This is crazy. And then, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Is like, <laughs> no, that's why we only filmed it was because of the DVD. It's good. We, it's we good hope. to have that. Yeah, good to have moment that. that moment. Just when you hear this small noise as I walk on stage, <laughs> <laughs> that little, a uh, little. A little wish of air. Wish. A wish of air. That's a nice way. Did Daddy fart? No, Daddy had a wish of air. What we call like a, a small olfactory wish. And if only I could have that wish near a flame. But it was like, and at the end, I felt the same thing too. I was like, wow, we did it. We did it! It's the idea of when you go. And if we'd done two days and edited it together, I think, you know, it would have been very funny, good material, great stuff, but a different feeling. I think people came at it going, this is it, one Wouldn't time. When they had the jazz. Yeah, the jazz, I mean, the jazz was, we got one shot, that's it. If you notice on the DVD, the reverse shot, when you see the, oh, yeah. the light, the only way to really do that was we had to take the uh, smoke mm -hmm. and put it right up by the spotlight. Oh, so you just have to have enough smoke in there because no one's smoking in the theater. So no one's smoking to... in the theater. It was a uh, little tricks. We had a 10 ton air conditioning unit. Oh, thank you. 20 ton air conditioning unit that was just right on top of your head and you were still sweating like oh, crazy. Yeah, I mean, I it was sweat. like hotter than hell in New York. Oh, it was insane because if, if they had really, if you hadn't had that, I think they'd just been a, screw all the water I had on stage, it was just been a puddle at the end. I sweat so much that even Brando's going, dear God, man, just wear a thong, don't be afraid, go out there. Not like Cher, but take a chance. Yeah. Because I would have been dead. I couldn't have, yeah. I, oh, I would also overheat when I, when the mind overheats, I can't work. I'd be like, get it. Has that happened to you? Oh, big time. I played a place where it was too hot on stage, and after a while, you just, you snap. You can't work. Brain doesn't work well. We kept the audience, we kept the theater at 61 degrees, something oh, we stole from Letterman. It works. People, it works. When you're cold, you laugh to stay alive. Cold and dark, right? Cold and dark. That's <laughs> cold and dark. What's it remind me of? Old time. <laughs> There's a joke about early sex, cold and dark. But it's, yeah, I think it helps a lot because when you get people hot, maybe it's because they just, you know, have the energy to laugh. But I've seen people when either the, the house is hot or the stage is hot, it doesn't work. It was interesting. I guess that day the New York Police Department had, uh, they had like about 10 to 15 guys that escaped within, after being arrested. So I said the New York Police Department had a new catch and release program much like bass fishermen. And then people, for them, it was like, ah, people the rest of the country are going, what? <laughs> and then we got back into the stuff. But it was a weird feeling that that night and the pressure of, you know, live and New York, and New York too, being, and on Broadway. On Broadway. Because the first couple of rehearsals, we were, we had theater audiences who weren't used to, you know. Right. A big cunning linguistic piece. At the <laughs> <laughs> My God, Margaret, is he doing what I think he is? Dead, my God. I, I would watch the people, when I would watch it on the road, I would, especially during the last bit, yeah. I would watch the audience. Me too. I peek out from under my arm and see women laughing their ass off, men going, is that how it looks? And women going, yeah. 
and also just seeing various different ages of people responding. One night there was a kid who just had his head buried, and I thought, oh my God, he's either he's, this is something he doesn't want to see till he's actually doing it. And then he kind of lifted his head up and was laughing his ass off. It turned out he was just, you know, laughing so hard he buried his head. Other times you'll see older couples kind of, <laughs> kind of remembering, like, I remember that. Those were wonderful times. Did I leave my teeth? And there was just strange. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wondered when you went to the gynecologist and he said, my God, it has teeth. Every gay man's worst nightmare. I told you. I told you that's what it has teeth. That's why I didn't go there. My mother said it has teeth. Never go near there. Just take out your teeth, Grandma. <laughs> and gum me. Mm. There was one night in Nashville, okay, when you were doing it, and there was this guy. I don't know if you heard him in the audience going, "Not long enough. Not long enough." <laughs> and he was going like this to his wife, who was like about she must have weighed about 180, and she was <laughs> dressed in this mini skirt and the blonde hair up to here. <laughs> He's going like this, and she's going like this. Yeah, no, thank you, Lord, for bringing uh, Bill here. And uh, it was not long enough. And, and there, you'd see some place where the ushers in, like oh, in the Grand Nashville. Old Opry. Ooh, they were old, uh, old Baptist ladies, and they they were like the ushers. Uh, yeah, at, when I did the Met with these old Irish ladies, and even the Met show was hardly as blue as this. And they, these old Irish ladies would go, "Oh dear God." He's doing that on the same stage as Pavarotti. <laughs> and you'd see him just go, oh, oh, my. And they like, there was one usher in Nashville I just saw like this. Who, she was watching the entire ending like, sweet Jesus, protect us all. No? Yeah. May we never see this side in our lifetime. That's why Baptists make love standing up so God thanks for dancing. <laughs> you know, it's that weird thing. And those are the ones that didn't want to laugh, but let laughed. Go. Yeah. Let go. Finally, yeah. I we saw were... one old blue hair who was just, she was absolutely hysterical. And you could tell that she had used to been seeing, you know, mm -hmm. Roy Clark. And, uh... <laughs> Minnie Pearl never did that. Howdy! <laughs> Price tag hanging off. Woo! Look there, boys and girls. Woo! Gonna be a night, I know, when it's right. Turn off that light, get there. Bury yourself, sweet pillow, never want to ever go, going down, blow the curly hair. When you're sitting on the zone, room, 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 in a room. See, I lost it, and then all of a sudden we go, go. Barney, you'd have to make it a choice then, make it a choice, shoot it a shot, look away, God. The Marty does this, the Marty look around. At that point, then Marty got a choice. Do we stay with us or do we cut away? But Marty have to stay, he shoot a shot like that. Eh? You do like a great Italian cinematographer. Do we get the money? Okay, we keep shooting. Well, I thought the money in this case was the extreme close-up. Bingo. Which has never really been used much in a comedy. Comedy, you know, the Johnny Carson shot, and what I was always taught was... Cowboys. Cowboy, yeah. right. And, you know... Cowboys you wanna... is above the chaps, right above the pistols, up to the head.